Hi friends, in today's session, we are going to start with our new chapter that is Control System of Machine Tools. This is Faizan Kagdi and I welcome you all to a lecture series of Machine Tool Design. Now let's begin with our first topic. What is Control System? So the control system of a machine tool is defined as a control of machining process. We are going to control the machining operations, machining process by means of a feedback device that could be either visual or surveyed to allow for the performance of ordered sequence of events, which means ordered sequence of events means one operation, after that another operation, then third operation, then fourth operation, which means we are going to control the operations. How? By using a feedback mechanism. Now, what are the elements of the control system? So, the elements include the transmitter, which is even called as a control member. Okay, then transmission elements. So, basically, transmission elements is a set of elements, or we can say it is a mechanism which is going to control or which is going to convert one form of motion into another form of motion. And third would be an operative member. That is a final operative member to which we need to operate. Right. It could be a gear shifting fork or we can say it could be a rack or a motor or a hydraulic valve or a hydraulic cylinder. Now how it's going to operate, how it's going to perform its task. So this is accomplished by transmitting instruction or a command from a transmitter through a chain of transmitting elements finally to the operative element which receives the command at the required time and is activated into action which means in general words i can say that we are going to initiate the controlling movements what we are going to initiate controlling movements so the controlling movement is initiated by a control member remember controlling movement will be initiated by a control member that control member could be a lever it could be a, a hand wheel, it could be a knob. Okay, that is basically a control member is what? It is a transmitter. But how it's going to initiate? So after receiving a feedback, okay, from a feedback device that is either visual or servo. Once it has received the instruction from a feedback device, it is going to operate the transmission element, which means a controlling movement will be given to a transmission element. Now, what is the function of transmission element? So, transmission element is a mechanism. It is going to convert the actual, uh, actual controlling movement into a control movement which is required at the operator end. Okay, which means that control movement which is required by the operator. And finally, the control movement is given to the operative member that is, let's say, for example, it could be a gear shifting fork, lever, rack, or hydraulic device so you can clearly see that a transmitter or a control member could be a manual it could be a mechanical electrical hydraulic or electronic which means in case of manual we can say it could be a hand or a foot by which we are going to operate the knob or a lever right or a hand wheel okay mechanical could be a cam or a drums now to understand this let us take a simple example i need to operate a cutting tool in case of a shaping machine now we all know that a shaping machine cutting tool will perform a reciprocating motion, right? So our operative member would be a cutting tool, right? To which we, uh, which type of motion we need to supply? Reciprocating motion. Okay, so what we are going to do? So first we are going to see that cutting tool is not reciprocating, which means a feedback has been obtained, right? So what, we, uh, what I will do, I will press a button. Now, as soon as I have pressed a button, which means I have operated the control member that is a transmitter from a transmitter movement is initiated and that movement is given to my transmission element that is our mechanism now let's say this mechanism is a quick uh, crank and rocker quick return mechanism right we all uh, we all have studied that mechanism in which a reci rot rotary motion is converted into a reciprocating motion which means the transmission element is going to convert rotary into a reciprocating and finally that reciprocating motion will be provided to our cutting tool which is our operative member. So this is how we can say that a control system is going to operate. Once it has been operated, we would say operative member is working, we get a feedback that our operation has been started. 
ओके तो दिस इज जनरल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ कंट्रोल सिस्टम सिमिलरली वी कैन अप्लाइड इन केस ऑफ अ रैक एंड पीनियन मैकेनिज्म इन बीच वी नो दैट पीनियन इज अ स्मॉल गियर इट इज रोटेटिंग एंड इट इज गोइंग टू कन्वर्ट रोटरी मोशन इन टू अ रेसिप्रोकेटिंग मोशन ऑफ अ रैक ओके नाउ लेट इज प्रोसीड फर्दर सो वी नीड टू सी फंक्शंस एंड रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ अ कंट्रोल सिस्टम सो देर आर थ्री मेन फंक्शंस व्हिच अ कंट्रोल सिस्टम हैज टू परफॉर्म फर्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज इट फॉर चेंजिंग स्पीड्स एंड फिट्स मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर चेंजिंग स्पीड्स एंड फिट्स ओके नेक्स्ट फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग द वर्किंग एंड ऑक्सिलरी मोशंस इन अ डिजायर्ड सीक्वेंस नेसेसरी फॉर मशीनिंग अ पर्टिकुलर पार्ट नाउ वी नो व्हाट इज वर्किंग मोशन it could be a primary cutting motion or a feed motion which means that two motions primary cutting motion and a feed motions are called working motions and auxiliary motions all we know that it is uh, includes the uh, clamping or unclamping of a work piece cutting tool right so that includes into a auxiliary motion so the sequence in which we need to operate these motions are controlled by control system remember there is a main task of a control system next task is machine tool also provided with the safety controls to prevent the damage to the machine tool and cutting tool during execution of primary and auxiliary motions which means even the function of a control system is to provide a safety control okay to prevent the damage remember machine tool and cutting tool should be prevented from any damage and that is controlled by what our control system okay i hope that you are clear with the parts of a control system remember the parts are transmitter transmission element okay operative member transmitter is even called as a control member remember it's called control member and finally our feedback mechanism it could be a visual or servo mechanism now next let us see requirements in the design so this is the most important question which is usually asked in a exam explain functions and requirements so what is the requirement so reliability is the most important factor reliability against failure to respond which means the greater the degree of automation of a control system the higher should be its reliability next important requirement is fast response to the information provided by the feedback device okay which means as soon as a feedback device provides information the Im immediate step has to be taken by a transmitter and finally it ha it has to transmit a controlling movement to the transmission element so response has to be much quicker okay and we can say the greater is the degree of automation the faster should be the control system response and finally it has to be it has a great accuracy so system requires a great accuracy which depends upon the accuracy of a feedback device control member and a transmission element that is our mechanism so higher is the accuracy of a feedback device of a control member and transmission elements we can say greater will be the accuracy of our control system okay now let us see next next topic that is classification of control system so the first classification is based on individual control control systems with individual control so what is going to happen in this system so we can say that each operative member is controlled by a separate control member which may be in general located at a different place okay so these systems are employed only in a heavy duty machine tools so it is very obvious that a operative member for example i can say a gear shifting fork okay a rack a hydraulic cylinder or a hydraulic valve these are all the operative members okay a cutting tool okay so this would be controlled by a separate control member okay each component or each member will be controlled by a separate control member and the location of this control members will be at a different places now control members could be a push button a knob right a hand wheel okay or a lever so these are all the control members okay so this could be located at a different places in case of a individual control so these are employed in a heavy duty machine tools now second is a control system with a centralized control so in this system the movements of operative member or each operative member is controlled by one or more than one control member whose location is centralized 
which means you can clearly observe the main difference that in this case the operative members can be controlled by one or more control member which means by one or more lever or knob or a hand wheel okay and the location of all this control member would be at a one place that is centralized okay so these systems are usually employed in a small and a medium sized general purpose semi automatic and automatic machine tools okay so there are two classifications remember of a control system first is based on a individual control in which every operative member is provided by a separate control member and second centralized control in which each operative member can be operated by one or more control members and whose location is centralized that is at a one place okay now the control systems with a centralized control is further classified into three types the first name is system with a simple centralized control system with a pre selective centralized control and system with a selective centralized control okay guys so this three types of centralized control we are going to study in our next session okay so i hope that you are clear with the introduction of a control system in today's session so till then stay tuned and thank you all